morning, everyone. Welcome to Jesus is Lord Ministry outside of here, outside of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Another rainy day and, and April 3rd. We're just praying for the sun, man, to, to shed some light and warmth on this planet. Uh, seems like it's been a mild winter, but man, it's just dragging on for some reason. But God is good and he'll make him he'll, he'll turn things around for us. And then some people will be complaining about the hot weather. So anyway, my name is Rick, for those that don't know me. And I um, just recovered from a little touch of flu or something I got on me last week so I missed last Wednesday and um but I'm back and uh with a passion and uh an unction to get bring the word again today um and like always guys we'll start out in prayer and get the service started Father, we pray with an open heart today that your word penetrates our hearts and minds to help us live live the life that is good and acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen. Now, I'm going to start out in Romans real quick, then we're going to give you to Psalms because like to say the title of today is renewing our minds but i subtitled it washing of the word too usually there's always something to kind of back it up because um there's so much in in god's word it's kind of hard to put a simple title on it to get a message out there but um the main topic is renewing our minds and i'm going to start out in uh, romans chapter 12 verse 2 and just read that one verse and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of god and man that's huge in that few words there how how big that is in, in a person's life you know don't be conformed to this world because that's what the world's all about what do you think they make commercials for uh, over time on television and radio whatever you listen to or watch um it's to entice you into buying something you don't even need or the world is constantly trying to sell us something even their their the 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 new way of life the the re the big reset uh one world government, one world religion, one world currency. All this is just to entice us, and they think they've got a better way, but the, the better way is God's way, and that's what we're going to uh, we're gonna search out through scriptures today. And um, I thought that'd be a good verse to start out because, um, you know, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And and how to get that transformation is through God's word. And that's why it's so important, guys, to pick up a Bible. Um, there you can pick them up at the Ollie's, the dollar store, the Walmart, just to take just if you don't have a Bible, just take time and pick one up because that is the only true way you're gonna renew your mind and get to where you need to be. Okay, I'm going to start out in Psalms chapter 1 and read 1 through 3. Who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, which I was just talking about, the ungodly would be the worldly ways, nor stands in the path of the sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, or the word of God, you could say. This is Old Testament, so it's going to be called the law, um, which we are no longer under the law because Jesus abolished the law um, and 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 put an end to sacrifice and all these things. We don't have to keep the law, but we want to live by the law and have the laws written on our hearts. I'm going to read that again. But but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and, and in his laws he meditates day and night. He, and then what happens if you do that? This is what happens. He, which would be us, shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its seasons, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does does shall prosper. And man, who wouldn't want all that? And we're just getting started. That was in Psalms uh, uh, 1, uh, chapter, 1, 2, and 3. I mean, and I, I, it's just beautiful. And I'm, an old, I'm a New Testament teacher and preacher, believe it or not. But I find, I, I find myself, I find the Lord lead me into Old Testament a lot lately, which is really cool for me. All right. We're going to go into Psalms chapter 139, read 1, 1 through 18. O Lord, have... O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts and afar off. Now think of that. Put yourself in this Bible. The, the Lord is speaking these things to us. 
you you comprehend my path and and my and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways see we didn't hide nothing from the lord we we have our little secret things we try to do, you know slip under the radar and all these things not that it's some heavy sin but the lord knows all things and knows our ways and that's exactly what it's saying there is not a word on my tongue but behold O lord you know it all together you have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me such knowledge is too wonderful for me it is high i cannot attain it think about how big this actually is the it, the word is so cool it's breaking it down where um you know where just mentioning sweet things to our ears that this is how god sees us and knows us and 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 his ways are so high that we can't even attain it but it's it's there for us to read and search out that's the whole thing for today we're going to search these things out through his word to renew our minds that's remember that's the the the, the title is such knowledge is too wonderful for me it is high i cannot attain it where can i go from from the spirit where can we go from the spirit think about it the spirit the spirit of god that hovered over this earth when it was dark and void before the world took form and and he and he spoke light and, and the water separated the waters from land and all these things created all the all creation and heaven and, and earth he is a spirit that hovered over this earth. Where could we, it's saying, where can I go from your spirit? And, um, or where can I flee from your presence? Think about it. You think you're getting away with things sometimes when we, even if we say talk about somebody or, or have a bad thought. And you think, well, you, you know, you think it's just this little secret or this little thought that you keep into yourself, but it's not true. God knows all things. And that's what the word is trying to tell us. So we'll be aware of that, aware of that and think that way. If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hands shall lead me. See, it's covering everything. And your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you. But the night shines as the day, the darkness as the night are both alike to you. This is God. The, 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 I don't know if you ever heard, there's not going to be a day and a night in heaven. It's just going to be, it's just going to be day. 24 7 24 7 like into eternity well that's kind of what it's saying there there's no darkness there's no dark in christ at all it's the same dark is the same as light to god because think about it, he created these things for you formed my inward parts which I, I like that too you covered me in my mother's womb and this i've always loved this verse i will praise you as i am fearfully and wonderfully made and put your name on that don't let the, these wonderful and beautiful words get past you and think you don't qualify or you can't be talking about me the thing i just said or did or thought um just yesterday or this morning all these things the enemy will try to convince you that you're not the person that god says you are but he's clearly saying you are fearfully and wonderfully made and you can't how can you go wrong with that? Think think on these things and meditate on these things. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you. Now, my frame was not hidden from you. That could be your just very existence, your 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 body, your skeleton, your every particle, every every d piece of DNA in you, you know, was not hidden from God. When I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. See, God knew us before the foundation of the earth. So if we, why try to avoid this living God and create this little life on this planet where you say you get a job and you work nine to five and you want to buy yourself a little house and put a little picket fence around and get a little dog and got yourself a new little shiny car and all these things and you set your goal just to be successful in this world and don't really wrap your mind around this true and living God that would give you strength to accomplish these things. Those things are okay, but 
you know, it's putting your renewing your mind and setting your mind on things above or setting your mind on things, in, you know, on God. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book, they were written. I love that. The days fashioned were for me when as when yet there was none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O oh God. Think of Catch that. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O oh God. Look at it like a question. Ask God, how precious are your thoughts to me today, God? You know, this is the kind of thing we got to seek out in this world we live in now. Because remember, the, the world's dark. You're going to get you could if you get caught up in the worldly things and worldly ways, you're going to be stumbling in the dark. And if you have a friend that's it, it, it's in the same position, you are it's going to be the blind leading the blind. And the Bible says you were both falling to a ditch. That's why even if you have friends or family that you see that are, aren't walking with the Lord and really not living a life a godly life like they should, you know, just if you get in that light and you, and you meditate on this word, you can help your brother or sister, you know, but if, but if you're in the same darkness, they are, you're both going to fall into a ditch. Verse 18, this is Psalms chapter 139, verse 18. If I should count them, they would be more than the number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. And I'm going to stop right there. I think that, that I'm going, to, I'm going to read 17 and 18 again. How precious also are your thoughts for me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more than the number of the sands on, 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 and the seas. Think about that. That's how precious you are to the Lord. And remember, this word is truth. This is the only book, this is the only uh, um Call it what you want. If you want to educate yourself and renew your mind, this is the only book that would be pure truth. So if it's saying God's thoughts, precious thoughts for you, or or it basically innumerable, that's what it is. And the, but the thing of it is, getting it in our hearts and believe these things, and not just reading a good scripture and 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 walking away and kind of forgetting about it by the end of the day or or when it's time to eat dinner or something like that. But um. Okay, we're going to move on to Proverbs chapter 4 and read 1 through 27. Um, oops, sorry about that. Hear my, hear my children the instructions of a father and give attention to no understanding. So right now, hear my children and the instructions of a father and give attention to these things. For I give you good doctrine do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words. That's what we're supposed to do. Let our hearts, our hearts, who we really are, who the true personality and, and the makeup of who you are is, is all in your heart. What comes forth from your heart is really the issues of life. That's what who you really are. Well, you you let your heart retain his word. So that's what's going to come forth from you. You get into the word of God and that's and renew your mind and you and that's what's going to come forth from you. You're not going to the current events or the ways of the world or the 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 darkness of the world, the depression of the world, the beaten down, the the the, the world is out to set, set out to beat us down. Well, we there's no room for that stuff if you're in into the word of God. Let let my let your heart retain my words. Keep my commands and live. Get wisdom and get understanding. That's what we're seeking today. Get wisdom and understanding of God's words to so in order to re renew our minds. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her and she will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. This is talking about the word of God. Love the word of God and it'll keep you. Think about it. You what you put in your ear gate and you, and you put loud in your eye gate is going to be in your heart. It's as, as simple as that. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. It's almost repeating itself to make sure we don't miss that. Because that's where th this is what this is all about. That's actually what the teaching is all about. You know, re renewing our minds. But how you could you could set your goal like when as you know if you graduate high school and you want to get on and move on to and get a, a degree a college degree and you know and and 
get into some tr- or um, you know skill or, or or even you want to become a professor of science or something like that and that and that's what you set your mind on that's what you're going to sell out you know, your very soul on that's who you're going to become just to say it was a professor of science or astronomy or uh, aerospace engineering and all these things but it's not you're you're not going to be fulfilled you're you're still going to have that void got that that big void still going to be in your heart and that's why you get understanding of the wisdom of the world is foolishness to God, the word says. We want the wisdom of God. So you could go after your education and stuff like that. And I'm fine with that. But the 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 the, the true you, who you really need to be, is only going to be found in the word of God, not in your ed- education or intellect. Exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory. She will deliver you. This is all what the word does for us. Hear my, hear my son and receive my saying, and the years of your life will be many. It says you'll live a long light if you, if you keep the word of God in your heart and meditate on it night and day. I have taught you in the way, ways of wisdom. I have led you in the right path. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. And when you run, you will not stumble. Take, take a firm hold of instructions and do not let it go. The instructions, the word of God, take a hold of it. Don't let it go. Don't let the world talk you out of it. Don't let even a, a friend or somebody you feel close to you give you advice. It's okay to take advice, but if it's taking you away from the word of God, then that's that that's the kind of advice you don't need 14 do not enter the path of the wicked and do not walk in the ways of evil that's just saying don't get don't go and to walk in the ways of the world basically avoid it do not travel in it turn away from it and pass and pass on that's the path that's that wide path to destruction it's talking about you turn away from that path i don't care who's if it's if it's not righteous if somebody's trying to lead you in a place and it's not of god and it's not righteous and holy then that that's the then that's the path to destruction whether it even looks good or or you're convinced by this person or or even a doctrine that it, it's okay to to wander down that path, but this saying avoid these things. Do not travel that path, for they do not sleep unless they have done evil. Talking about the people that are just living a sinful life and have no care for the word of God or the sacrifice of Jesus. And their sleep is taken away unless they make one fall. People just, they have rest in knowing that they make people stumble and fall because their hearts are evil, basically. For they eat the bread of the wickedness and drink the wine of the violence. And doesn't that describe the world today? But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. And me and Stephen were just talking on a guy here about where is that sun? I mean, it lights up our path, you know, and it shines ever brighter unto a perfect day. And that's even in the natural, we would light. I mean, think about it, guys. Everybody likes a nice, sun, sunny, warm day. I mean, I don't know anybody on this planet that wouldn't want that. And so it's funny. It's, it's even in God. God's word. These things we should be seeking after. It's a good thing to seek uh, uh, like the light and the sunshine, the warmth of a day. The ways of the wicked is like a, like darkness. See, night and day. The ways of the wicked are like darkness. It's it's clear clear in His word. They do not know what makes them stumble. If you're not in the Word of God and accepted Jesus in in your heart as your Lord and Savior, you are in the world. There's no in between. It's either you're in darkness or light. It's not like you're going to choose one or the other. Well, just choose the light. Just choose the Word of God and get started. Today, guys, if you're not in the Word of God, I highly recommend it. Get started because that means you're, if you're not in the Word of God and have that shining and lighting up your path, then, you, then you're in, in on the, the broad path to destruction in the darkness and stumbling like the rest of the world. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. See, that's what open your eye gates to the Word of God. Even if you just slowly got started. I mean, I've been in the Word of God 15, 16 years now. 
which really isn't that long for a man my age. But, you know, you get started. I was in my 50s uh, or 50 or something when I started. Um, you know, so you you get you get a start today. Get in the word of God. And and, and that way you're going to get that brightness and that and he's going to shine light on your on your path. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Let them in the midst of your heart. See, no, I'm sorry. Keep them in the midst of your heart. The word of God. Keep it in your heart, what he's saying. For they are life to those who find them. And there it is. You want life, man. You, you Sure, we'd all like to have a perfect day, wake up in the morning, feel great, have a just a, everything just like clockwork, a, the perfect breakfast, a perfect lunch and dinner and the weather and everything's just, just a bed of roses. But... You know, if you've got the word of God in her, you you could get even in a cloudy day and, and you could find a nice quiet place and turn on your little night, your light and shine on your little Bible or, or and get into the word of God. You can brighten up your day by these words. And that's what that's what this is all about. Renewing our minds and filling our hearts full of the word of God, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. It even says we'll be healthier. I mean, that's what it's, I just read it straight out of the Bible, and hell to our flesh. This is what the Word of God would do for you in a person's life. Keep your heart with all your diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. And I was just talking about that. Keep the Word of God in your heart, and that's what's going to come forth from you in the issues of life. don't. If you're caught up in world events, current events, and all this stuff, then that's what's going to come forth from you. So if the world's down, and, and believe me, there's no good news. I don't watch the news, but a little bit of um, um, outlet, I, I, some of the things I watch on um like say YouTube that I feel is, is a good source of news, say for what's going on in Israel, you know, but if you're, if you're listening to bad news, guess what's going to come forth from you? Cause that's what's in your heart. So at, when you, when you hide the word of God in your heart, no matter what the day looks like, that's going to come forth from you. If you talk to somebody long enough, that's, that's what's going to come forth from you. Put away from you all deceitful, deceitfulness, and per, and per, perverse lips far from you. Just stay away from these things. You can make a choice. Even somebody's talking or sharing a, a a a joke that's not really clean, and you and you repeat it to someone else. It's just keep the stay stuff stuff away from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all of your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left or remove remove your foot from evil. Purposely, on purpose, if you see something even in this world and something and you're and you hear something and you know that it's not of God, turn away from these things. Don't, don't just just remove your foot. Remove. Don't follow that path of unrighteousness. This is chapter um, chapter five in um, Proverbs. I'll read a couple of verses. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Lend your ear to my understanding. God's wisdom. God's understanding, not the world's. Let that that you may preserve d discretion and your lips may keep knowledge. And that's what we want. We want our words to keep knowledge, the knowledge of God and, and his holiness, not the not the wisdom of the world, you know, which is 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 the downfall of a lot of people. They they put their 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 intellect, their education first with and and there's no god in that and they they're going to fall because there's no strength behind that you're, you're on your own you're you're striving on your under your own intellect your own energy your own thoughts you how hard you want to strive for this um to go after say this education or something that you think's going to give you life and things like that so let's move on to let me read ephesians chapter 4 20 to 24 but you have not so learned christ if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in jesus and this is what this church is all about i mean jesus is lord ministry he's out here it's out of gettysburg pa we're all about jesus and and I'm, i'll read that again but you but you have not so learned christ if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in jesus that's where you're going to find truth 
that you put off concerning your formal conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. That's the ways of the world. You know, you that that's what you want to cast down and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And there it is. There's the title today. It's in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you may put on a new... And my pages are stuck together. Sorry, guys. Put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. And there it is. That's the renewing of your mind. We were cre- we were created in God's image. So that's a. It sounds almost overwhelming. And man, how could this possibly be? Well, it is possible because it's in His Word. That's the thing about staying in this Word, meditating it, meditating on this Word night and day. So I mean, you know, the new man was created according to God in true righteousness, and that's where. That's that's the only way you're going to attain it is to go know the word and go after it and 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 meditate and meditate on it. Okay, we're going to move on to Philippians chapter four and read eight and nine. Finally, br- finally, brethren, whatever thing. Not like this. I'm going to try to walk through this. And this is this is what should be in our hearts. This is the things we should pursue and meditate on. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true. Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, what, whatever is of good report, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. I just used the word meditate a couple of times through this service. Um, just don't read it and not meditate on it. It's neat to um you know, to walk through this and how beautiful these words are. And, but it's got to get in our hearts somehow. And it's just like practice, you know, you, when you want to become good at something, you practice it. You, you know, you just don't pick, you know, you when, when you're a kid, you want to swing a baseball bat and hit a home run. You, you're not going to more than likely not going to be to pick up that ball bat when you're a little kid and, 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 and swing and hit and knock it out of the ballpark. You're going to need practice. All kind of sports is just a good, you know, which it's kind of obvious what it takes to, um, to, to go to the Olympics and all the training. We got it's the same thing in the Word of God. You got to train yourself and meditate on the Word of God, and then then it'll come easier to you, and it'll and that's what's going to come forth from you. And and especially these things we just went through. I mean, whatever things are pure and lovely and 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 virtuous and praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And that's what's going to make, that's the difference between night and day, what we're allowing in our hearts and our minds and what we're going to meditate on throughout our, <laughs> throughout our life, actually. Verse 9, the things which you've learned and received and heard and saw in me, these things do, and the God of peace will be with you. And don't we all want that? The God of peace with us through our trials. And even you, it, it, wouldn't it be just great just to have the peace of God in you just getting up in just an average day when you wake up and put your feet on the floor in the morning? You know, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be great to have the peace of God with you? And it's obtainable because that's it's that's what we're trying to we're going after today to the renewing of the mind. So basically, all these words we're reading, we need to go over them again and meditate on them and, and keep them in in our hearts. Make sure I'm not uh, getting behind here. Okay, the things which you've learned and received and heard and saw in me, do these things, and the peace will be with you. And we're gonna, I'm gonna move on. I think from there that I, I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, let's move on to Colossians and read one through seventeen. Um, chapter three. I'm sorry, Col- Colossians chapter three, one through seventeen. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. I'm going to read that again. This is what this is what it's going to take to get to where we need to be spiritually. If then you were raised with Christ, if you believe in that that Christ that Jesus had died and it and for your sins and was raised again on the third day, and you were raised, if then you were raised 
with Christ. Seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above and not on things on the earth. This is instructions how to get to live a holy life and a, a fruitful life and a healthy life. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. The old man should have died. The old person, the old you should have died when you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you believe he died in your place, you actually died with him. But when he rose again on that third day, you you should be, you should be raised again, a new creature in Christ Jesus. The renewing of your mind should be renewed. You, you're, you're on the way to a new life, you know, incorruptible life. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. You're hidden in Christ now. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. You'll, you'll know him because you'll be like him, is what it's saying. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. This is the things you got to get rid of out of your life. Fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. So if you claim that you're saved and you gave your life to the Lord and you're going to promise to live your life for him and you believe the sacrifice that Jesus made and the shedding of his blood and you stay the same, and you still live in the world and you and you live in idolatry and all that that's that's you cannot be truly saved i'll just put it that way in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them you may have you once walked in that idolatry and, and and the passions of the world but when you're born again these things should not be is basically what it's saying but now you yourselves are to put off all these things. This things we got to get rid of them and put these things off. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. I just said it. You put off the old things, the old worldly ways. You just put them off. You cast them down and have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge of according to the image of him who created him. Now, I'm going to read that again, because remember, the topic is renewing our minds today. This is um, Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. And, and this, is what, this is what we should be doing and what we are doing. We'll say it that way. And have put on the new man. You, you've, you cast down the old man. He's gone. You, you, when you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then that that way you you've turned your back door on the world and opened up your heart to God at that point. So so what it's saying now, now since you've gotten rid of the old man, you have put on the new man who is renewed. And there's that word renewed in knowledge, according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all in all. Now, ain't I love that? It's all about Christ. It's not of your own works, your own effort. Anyway, you've died to the guy, the person that used to work as hard as he could to accomplish this and that, found yourselves in the ways of the world, trying to compete with the world. That's the stuff. That's the old man. You're but it's all about Christ now. It's all in Him and and Him through working through you to to uh, just to live a, a healthy and um, fruitful life. Therefore, as the elect of God, this is us. I like this. This is therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender. This is more instruction. This is more things we should be doing. This is this is how. This is what God would like to see in all of us. I'll start again. Where there's, oh, I'm sorry, ch chapter or verse 12. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. See? But so you think, man, how are we possibly going to be able to get there? Only through Christ in you. 
the spirit in you. That's what the renewing of the mind, the renewing of your mind comes in. What's in the man's heart comes forth from his lips, basically. So to get there, we can do this. I mean, but again, it's staying, staying in the word, not just getting up on a Sunday morning and sitting under a, 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 a teaching or a preaching for 45 minutes and then staying in the natural or in the worldly ways the rest of your week it's it's a meditating on the word and and filling your mind for for the word of god and and don't let it go i'm not talking about 10 hours a day but you'll you'll know in your heart when you pick up your bible and read some scripture and and it starts changing you and and you find yourself thinking about even a, a passage you read during the day, that's because that's what's in your mind, and God can bring these things to remembrance for you. It's all part of renewing your mind, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. Oh, I'm sorry, no, I'll move down to 14. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Now, I'm going to have to read that again. This is, um, this it is all about love. God is love. And if we say we love God, then we should love others, basically. And 14 says, this is what this is the main thing we should be um, pursuing and also doing as Christians on this earth. Above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which also you were called in one body and be and be thankful let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatever you do in the word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Excuse me. Giving thanks to God the Father through him. Man, that is, a, that is to me, that's, that's awesome. Um it's all about Christ, but how are we? And and you you still might this might be like a little much. It's like man, this is um, <laughs> you know, this is a little much for me. But don't look at it that way. We, I know we've covered a lot of scripture, and I want to um hit a little bit more. I got a little bit more time, but that's why you can't just. Somebody told me once, you know, once I uh, found Christ, and I was I could not let. I was telling everybody my their cousin about, you know, my, my faith and I found Christ and deliver me from alcohol and all these things. But, um, you, but then this person I was sharing with, it was in our, my family, um, said, well, I read the Bible once. I really didn't get the, anything out of it. And I'm thinking really, and just say they did, I'm not going to call them as I am. That's hard to believe. Just, just say this person did read that Bible from front to back one time. It's just like I was talking about earlier about practicing and exercising and 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 be diligent about things. It's the same thing in the Word of God. If you pick up this Bible once in your lifetime and you read it and you tell you convince yourself, well, I didn't get anything out of it, so you, then you move on. Then that then I guess that is possible. But this. This lesson for today is renewing our minds. That means you to renew your mind just like anything, just by common sense and in a natural way of teaching and or learning, you've got to be diligent about it and 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 just meditate on it and stay in this word. So I'm gonna finish in first Peter chapter one, three through tw uh three through twenty-five. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And see, that's a salvation message. And, um, and I'll, I'll mention salvation just real quick at the end. I'm, I'm actually running out of time, so I'm going to. I'm going to read a little bit more and I'm going to touch on that. Let me just read that again. To me, that's a salvation message right there. First Peter uh, chapter one, verse three. Blessed be the God and the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope. There's we're on this planet. We're alive and well. But that living hope, where is that? What is that living hope that that through the the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away preserved in heaven for you. 
Basically, if you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'll kind of break it down quick for you. I'm running out of time. Is is you you have to admit that you have sin in your life. I don't care how small or how big. Just accept. Just admit that you're a sinner, and then but then you got to believe in your heart and the sincerity of your heart that God the Father sent His Son Jesus to die for those sins, to die for your sins personally. And if you believe that and you profess that with your mouth, Father, I believe that you sent Jesus, your Son Jesus to die for my sins. And I and I promise I'm going to live my life for you. You're talking to the Heavenly Father, this your Creator, that, you, that from this day forward, I'm going to live my life for you. And I thank you, Lord, for saving me by the blood of, of your son. And, and, and Jesus said, it is finished when the last words he spoke meant that there's, there's, there's no more sacrifice, no more um, sacrifice of blood. That it was a final sacrifice. That's what this is about. That's what's going to give you new life starting at that point moment forward i don't care if you're one or 100 here you accept jesus as your lord and savior for the forgiveness of sins you've got a new life started there people and the, and if you haven't done that you you i basically just broke it down it's just a matter of admitting you're a sinner and knowing that god the father sent his son jesus to die in your place for them sins and you receive that in your heart and speak that with your mouth and uh, confess that with your mouth. You have been, you're saved, but you, but then there's going to be a change. You're going to see a change. You're going to want to get into the word. You're going to want to attend church. There's things that you're, you're going to start seeing a heart change in yourself. You're going to want to treat people differently because you, it, you've had a heart transplant. You, you're no longer the person you weren't once were. So, um, guys, I hope you're, I'm, I'm running out of time. So, I'm, um, I'm going to wrap it up here. It's uh, it's been great getting back behind this pulpit again. Um, I hope you guys uh, walked away with something, even if it's just one seed planted to get us. Re just don't it. Just think about it. Renewing of my mind. What can I do to do that? Just think about that. I'll just end with that. When the title was renewing renewing our minds. Ask yourself that. How can I renew my mind? And then you go pick up a Bible. And God will lead you into the scriptures that you need for yourself, because this book is custom tailored to every living being on this planet. And um, I'd recommend starting out in the New Testament, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But, you know, you you that's between you and the Lord. And um, guys out there, we're in the last days. Um, we're in the we're on the cusp of World War Three. I don't want to end on a you know, negative note, but the return of Christ is soon. Uh, it is what it is. So um, seek him with all your heart and, and, um, and I'll, I'll be seeing you guys next Wednesday. God bless.